Phil here from Monopoly Tanked, and today I'm going to show you how to paint this Blood Angel Space Marine. Like many of my paint schemes, I start off this model with a pre-highlight of Media Comm Art Opaque White. This step helps to build up the volumes of Marine's armor and will show through in future steps as we'll be spraying on semi-transparent layers next. In order to build up the brightest highlights on the highest points of this Marine's armor, I spray on multiple layers of this opaque white until I get to a pure and bright white on the top of the backpack, head, and shoulder pads. I've also found it pretty important here to make sure that there are no pure black parts left on the model after this step, as the transparent paints I will be using later on are not quite opaque enough to really show up over pure black and instead look better over a dark gray. For the red, I airbrush on a layer of Scale 75 Antares red that is thinned down enough so it's semi-transparent and the contrast from the previous pre-highlight stage shows through. In some places, I actually did two layers of this red to ensure that the color was rich and vibrant. There aren't really any set rules here though, and I just sprayed the extra layer where I thought it would look good. I actually do this a lot and don't really have any hard and fast rules when painting which probably makes these tutorials a little bit harder to follow along, but I just put paint down in a way that I think looks good, knowing that if I'm wrong, I can always paint over it later. Next up, I mix a little bit of Scale 75 Golden Skin into the Antares Red and use this to highlight the highest points of the Marine's armor. I use skin tones here to highlight the red as I find they provide a very nice warm highlight tone without turning the model either to orange or to pink as you'd get if you applied or used yellow or white to mix into the red. In order to bring in some saturation and juicy eye-catching color to the model, I next spray the entire thing with two thinned down coats of Intensity Crimson Ink. I have gotten a few questions before on using inks, and I really need to do a video on the topic eventually. But for now, I just want to let you all know that acrylic inks are super pigmented out of the bottle and generally need to be thinned down quite a bit. How much you thin them though will have a huge impact on the end result you get and how many layers you need to spray onto it. So you may need to experiment with your ink to thinner ratio and number of layers you get if you're following along with this paint scheme. For the last step of the armor, I thinned down some violet ink and turned my air pressure way down low, like to 10 psi and spray this ink mixture into the shadows of the model. By turning the pressure down low, you get a ton of control over where you are spraying this ink, and because it is so thin, it will flow through the airbrush just fine at such a low PSI. Also, I'm using violet here, as I really like how red looks when shaded with either violets or purples. This isn't really a traditional Games Workshop style of painting, obviously, but I'm calling this out because I really think it's important to experiment with the colors you're using and try to get contrast on your model, not just in the values of the color or the hue, but also in the actual colors you're using as well. After the shadows of the model are down, I spray the entire thing with thin down gloss varnish to prepare it for the oil step coming up next. For the oil stage of this Blood Angel, I decided to use Burnt Umber Oil Wash as I think that the brown of the Burnt Umber will look better than pure black. As always though, I encourage you to experiment with your own color combinations to see what works best for you. I apply this wash to the recesses of the marine's armor by gently tapping my loaded brush to the model's recesses where I want to apply the wash. Because of the gloss varnish applied previously and the thin nature of the oil wash, this will flow naturally into all the recesses and require minimal work. I try to be pretty neat here and only get the wash where I want it to go, but if you accidentally mess up and get the wash somewhere else, you can always wait for it to dry and gently remove it with a foam makeup remover. After I'm happy with the oils and that all of the excess oil wash has been wiped off, I spray the model with another layer of gloss varnish to lock in all the oil wash and to prepare it for the decals coming up next. The decal step for this model was pretty straightforward as all I really did was apply two decals to the shoulder pads and hit them with a little bit of microsol. Once the microsol and decal had dried, I then sprayed the entire model with AK Interactive matte varnish to kill all the gloss from the previous gloss varnish steps as well as to give the model a nice matte finish. In order to better define the edges of the Marine's armor, I generally prefer to use sponge chipping as opposed to edge highlighting as I find it both easier to do as well as it looks more realistic. For this Marine, I started off by lightly sponge chipping gray graphene all over the armor. I used gray here simply because I like how gray and red look together, and the gray reminds me of a primer that would naturally be under the red armor if the paint was chipping off. I next go back and sponge on Scale 75 Heavy Metal over the edges of the armor again, but this time much more lightly than before. This is to represent chips that have gone all the way through the primer layer and are showing the bare metal underneath. For the last sponge chipping step, I lightly sponge on some Antares Red. This step helps provide a little bit of texture to the model, as well as break up the large flat areas that are so prevalent on Mark III Marines. In my quest to avoid edge highlighting as much as possible for rank and file troops, I have started leveraging some sponge chipping on bolters as well as the rest of the model. So all I do here is first paint the bolter casing with flat black, 
and then sponge chip it with a silver color, in this case, scale 75 heavy metal. And next paint all the metallic parts on both the Volter and the rest of the Marine with heavy metal first, and then give them a wash with Known Oil Shade from Games Workshop. As long as you don't apply this shade so heavily that it pulls, this is a very easy way of getting good looking silvers with relatively little fuss. The eyes are also done fairly simply by first putting down a layer of bright silver over a black undercoat. In this case, I used speed metal, but any bright silver will do. Next I apply a fairly thick layer of Games Workshop Beel Tan Shade to give the eyes a green tint as well as shade them at the same time. Black is a fairly tricky color to make look good, as it's really easy to make look too gray if you over highlight it, but it can also look really flat and boring if you don't highlight it enough. To make matters worse, it's kind of a pain to blend properly, and if you don't, this stark line between layers can be really obvious. So for this Blood Angels Roller Pad trim, I came up with a black technique that is still fairly quick and easy, but produces an interesting and well highlighted black. To start with, I simply apply an even coat of flat black over the entire rim. I then very roughly highlight the rims with graphene gray. This step is really to build up the mid-tone eventually, and should end up covering about 60% of the rim. For the last highlight, I use graphite to edge highlight the shoulder pad and provide some edge definition as well as hit the studs. Finally, I apply a wash of non oil over the entire shoulder pad to darken up the trim and to help blend all the highlights together. It also really helps to darken the color to make the rim look black as opposed to gray. It's important here though to apply a smooth, even layer of non oil and not let it pull, otherwise you run the risk of getting tide marks or excessive buildup of the shade, which just doesn't look that good. It took me a while to figure out how I wanted to base this model, but eventually I settled on a worn industrial green base because I thought it would look good and contrast nicely with the red of the model. I'm not going to get into specifics on how I did the base in this tutorial, but in short, I used chipping medium and green grays to get a chipped and beat up looking base. I then applied MIG streaking grime over the entire model to give it a grimy and lived in looking base before sealing off the whole thing with matte varnish. As always, I painted the base rims black and the model was done. So there you have it, the finished Blood Angel Tactical Marine. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps this channel grow. Also, I'm trying out a new audio setting for this video, so please let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. I'm still trying to dial in my sound and I'm not quite happy with it, but would love to know what you all think to see how I can make it better for next video. Thanks for watching and hobby on.